and I had to go back to the store to get a new pinion seal. I totally forgot. So now I've got all the parts that I need to go ahead and reassemble this thing and get back on the road. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so my first order of business is to get this outer pinion bearing in and retain them in with my new pinion seal. and put my new crush collar onto my pinion gear. Now this is not the procedure that I would do if I had replaced my inner pinion bearing on this guy, but because everything's exactly the same and I know that my backlash and my pinion depth was correct before I began, I'm going to go ahead and do a permanent install of my pinion gear. But again, if I had replaced this inner pinion bearing, then this would be a totally different procedure which we'll cover in a future rebuild video. All right, seat that all the way back, and now I'm going to make sure I get my yoke on all the way, which was the problem to begin with with this car, is that it backed off quite a bit. All right, and this new nut I can feel has considerably more bite on the threads, so that's good. All right, some of you guys are probably wondering why I'm kind of going a little more bolt by bolt through this thing when there's obviously really no skill involved with a lot of this. That's because you're going to overlook some important things, and not the least of which is if we look, I don't know if you can see that play there, but that's what caused my problem originally is this movement with the pinion gear. So what I need to do is set properly what's called the preload. And what that is is torquing this pinion nut enough that we remove all the slack, but also create just a slight amount of drag. So you can see how easy this spins right now meaning that that bolt is just too loose. We want to get just a slight amount of drag, and there's actually specifications for that drag. And what you'll do is put an inch-pound wrench on there, and I believe for this model, uh, the specifications are somewhere between 15 and 35 inch-pounds. And I can definitely tell you that 35 inch-pounds is too heavy. So I go much lighter towards the 15. So let me go ahead, and you only get one chance to do this right, again, because of the crush collar, remember. So we're going to go ahead and set this preload. Okay, it's still a little bit too loose. So again, you really only get, well, I get two chances to do it because I got two crush collars. Okay, there's what I'm looking for right there. Just a very slight amount of drag, but you can certainly feel it. And there's actually two preloads, and we'll talk about that when we get to the rebuilding video. This is your first preload, and then you'll have a total preload. But I can tell that's exactly what I want. We could also... We could also put an inch-pound wrench on here and see how much torque it takes to turn this, and that's showing right about 15 inch-pounds, which is perfect for me, so I like this. And you can see we've removed all the play in this thing, so we are good to go. Let's go ahead and get that carrier in there and check our backlash. All right, for my backlash adjustment, you'll see I've got a dial indicator set up on one of the teeth on the ring gear, and I want this as perpendicular as possible. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and hold the pinion in place by holding the yoke. And then I'm just going to rock my ring gear back and forth by hand. And you can see we're reading just about six thousandths. And that's perfect because the specification for backlash on this model with this ring and pinion set is between five thousandths and nine thousandths of an inch. And because I'm a gear slammer, I want to be on kind of the tighter end of that. So we are within spec, and I like to be at the lower end personally, so I am happy with that. And we'll talk more about this in the rebuild video on what to do if your backlash doesn't measure correctly. I'm going to go ahead and add my gear marking compound to both sides of my ring teeth. And again, we'll go over this more in the actual video for the rebuild, but... What I like to do is go ahead and install my axles, put my emergency brake on kind of halfway to create a load on the ring gear. And that way when I turn the pinion to pass the paint through the pinion, it kind of simulates the car being more under load under driving conditions. And I just think it's a little more accurate representation of my pattern. All right, so I'm going to have to use a ratchet to turn the pinion now because I've got a little bit of tension with the parking brake. And I'm going to go ahead and turn this ring gear so that the paint passes through the pinion. All right, and I also want to back it out so that I can get the reading on the other side of the teeth as well. 
All right, so if you look at this tooth right here, we can see that the pattern is about as good as I'm going to get it, I believe. It's right in the center. We see we don't have paint removed from the heel or the toe region, and we've got a little bit of paint on the crown here. If anything, it might be a little deep to the root or the bottom of the tooth, but I'm pretty happy with that. And the other thing is, uh, you won't be able to see it in the camera, but I've got a similar pattern on the other side of the tooth. So I believe we've got a pretty good pattern for our ring and pinion here. We know the backlash is set right. I'm going to bet that that clunking sound is gone for good. Let's go find out. Oh yeah, that is much better. There is no back and forth play here at all. And the load feels just perfect. So I believe it is time to take this for a test drive. See what happens when you get all distracted from filming this stuff. I forgot gear oil. I had to clean up and go to the auto parts store for gear oil. They're getting to know me really well today. All right, let's give it a go. All right, and I can already feel just backing out of the garage that that backlash clunk is definitely gone. Let me go ahead and move forward. Oh yeah, definitely gone. Feels perfect. So let's go ahead and put some uh, meat to these gears and make sure that they hold up. Alright, as soon as traffic clears, I'm going to kind of drop the clutch on it a little bit and see if I can get it to clunk or anything like that. Uh, here's a good chance. Feels perfectly fine. No problem at all. I'll get a chance here on this green light to kind of drop the clutch on it a little bit and uh, kind of close to my neighborhood so I don't want to draw too much attention to myself here. Oh yeah, absolutely smooth as silk. No problem at all. All right, let's get back and wrap this video up. All right, well, I can't say that was a whole lot of fun, but hopefully next time I get like a check engine light or something where I don't have to get all dirty. But the idea with this video was kind of to show you the basics of the rear end and differential and also what some of the diagnostics that you would do, how to check your backlash, a little bit about some of the tools you'd need, adjusting backlash, things like that. We'll, of course, do a much more in-depth thing when I do the eventual rebuild video on a differential, but this should kind of get you by if you need to do some diagnosis or something at least. So until next time, we'll catch you later. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this helpful.